I want to, I've been hearing a lot, this phrase a lot, and I used to say it a lot myself, but the more I hear it, I, I, I usually don't check it because it usually isn't that big a deal to check this statement. But inside, I cringe a little bit when I hear it because I'm like, well, it, in an essence, when I, when I, if I agree with this statement, I'm losing something greater than what I had. So here's the statement. And I know, and I know we've all said it. And I still say it sometimes to this day without thinking about it. And then I cringe when I say it. We were talking, talking about how good God is. And we're like, we just gotta, we just gotta thank God, you know, for today. Cause we woke up and, 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 and the alternative is worse than, than waking up. And I'm like, well, no. And, and, and that, that's what makes me cringe because I'm like, well, if I don't wake up, that means I am secure and assured I'm in the presence of God. So I'm like, that's got to be better than me waking up and going through this, this temporal life that we're living. So I cringe a little bit. It's not, it's not going to make or break anybody's salvation. I don't think, cause that's just the way we talk. But we, if we follow that thought thread out is like, so what you're telling me is you haven't thought it out, you know, because if you're, if you, and that's why I don't check anybody, because I it could, if if I tried to check them, it could sound like I'm being pretty judgmental. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah this is what Paul said to the Philippians, too, because yeah. he's talking about, well, it, you know, if I wake up tomorrow morning and I'm I'm over there, that's far exactly. better, you know. Exactly. Uh, but uh, there's there's usefulness to waking up yeah. tomorrow morning, yeah. but it's not usefulness to like, man, you know, I'm trying to make that second million. I'm trying to get yes. that Ferrari. I'm trying to no, not for that reason, yes. but because if I wake up and I'm still on this side. My God purpose. has something purpose. for me yep. to do. Yep. But if I wake up over there, then then that's better. Then I got something different to do. Yeah. I don't know how to explain it. Don't really study it out. But I know I'm not going to be over there just doing nothing. He's going to have something for me to do, even if it's just a basic of as being like the angels and singing holy, holy, holy for eternity. I don't think that's where we're going to be. But I think there's going to be a purpose for us, whatever that's going to be. But it started making me cringe. I heard it this morning and I was like, I really want to check them on it. But I'm like, it's not that big a deal. It's not going to, it's not hurting their salvation to say it, but it's kind of like, are you forgetting what the alternative is? The alternative is so much better. I'm going to be standing in front of Jesus and I know I'm going to at least go, well, you get to stay. I know I'm going to at least get that. You know, hopefully I get well done, thy good and faithful servant. But I know I'm going to get, well, well, you get to stay. I know I'm getting that because I'm just like everybody else. I'm guaranteed my ticket. I got my ticket, you know, and and, and I'm assured because scripture tells me assured of my salvation. It's not going to be like, boy, I really hope when I get there, I did it okay. No, I'm short of my salvation. You know, it tells me I'm assured of it. I used to worry about that and uh, I know I'm not perfect. Yep. So what I said, well, Lord, um, I'm going to try to serve you, try to be the, per the person that you want me to be, and um, hopefully I will make it to heaven. Mm -hmm. But whether I do or not, I'm still going to try to serve you. Mm -hmm. And that way I don't have to worry. Yeah, yeah and, and that takes the pressure off us of what to do or the don'ts. But the way I looked at that is, okay, I had to come to the realization at some time in my walk. And it, and it was the same realization when I accepted the ticket as the power of the ticket. Is the blood of Christ strong enough to do what he said it was going to do? Yes. Yes. So no matter, as long as I don't turn and run the other way, proverbially, or just deny him, his blood's covering me. And if I had a true conversion and only me and him know that, you know, I might be able to shine some fruit up and put it on the table and it looks okay, even though it's about to rot in the next 10 minutes, but it looks okay when you walk by and then I can wax coat it again. But it was so much more simpler. I'm like, Lord, what you did for me is 100% assurance if I accept that. I will be a rascal like you were saying, and I will mess up. But because of what you did, you've given me the, the, the privilege to come to you and say, I'm a rascal. I know you did this for me 2,000 years ago, so what I do next week is already covered, but thank you. Forgive me. And I continue to shape and mold. And assurance is there. And when you study out the word assurance through Scripture, it, it just makes it so much simpler. We don't have time to get into it, but it is pretty powerful. But uh, 
Verse 7 of, of 2 Corinthians 5, it, it starts digging in a little bit for For we walk by faith, not by sight, Amplified says, living our lives in a manner consistent with our confident belief in God's promises. Isn't that what we just talked about? The promise of God is if I accept the death, burial, and resurrection and the totality of Christ, what He did for me, by faith, I can have confident belief in that promise. And that's what he was talking about. Remember one of the verses earlier? If you have confident, if you, what, what was it? The Amplified said that if you have you know, a down payment on the fulfillment of his promises, so that's one of the promises that we know. Uh, if I accept what he did, I have my ticket. He wants me to have more than a ticket to get on the caboose because he wants us to live the other promises. But And, and it's fascinating. Um, a confident belief in God's promises. A manner consistent with that. I think that's the challenge. When we're baby Christians, we, we, we struggle with the consistency of our belief in that. It's like, well, you know, well. and then we struggle and then we finally, we get to a place where it's, we start to understand the assurance. I'm assured that this is going to happen. If I stay out of the sight, I can stand on my faith. Might not like the circumstances, but God's going to take care of this. And that's hard for us. Because we like to look.